Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. Well, we are excited to bring the word today, and I say we, it is Mika and me. And um, yeah, we, we are excited to bring the word because the Lord is, the Lord is ready to do some things. How many of you know God's on the move? Yeah? Yeah. Man, it's so good to see all of you, and it's, it's fun. I, I had so many texts from different people doing stuff with their moms today, and uh, we just so celebrate you moms. Uh, we're so blessed to have all of you here. Did everybody get one of the, uh, the notebooks? Okay, good. I hope every, if you didn't get a notebook on your way, and make sure you get one. All right. All right. Well, we have our, our message today is built for bravery. Built yeah. for bravery. Yeah. So we just wanted to share today about bravery as women, as body of believers. Um, you know, all of us, of course, can be empowered by the Lord to be brave. But I believe that women have something unique. We have, we have a different kind of wiring to be um, brave, like uniquely fierce. <laughs> Where it's just wired into us. So I just was thinking back to when Quinn was a little baby. And I, the first time I attended church with her, I felt like a football player like head down, had my football, and I felt like I was being tackled. We were going to be tackled, and I was like trying to guard off all the threats. And it was like, this doesn't even make sense, but I am, I am like, y'all back off. <laughs> you people are dangerous. <laughs> so there's just something that, you know, it's, it's hardwired into us. I, I also remember leaving the grocery store and having her in a little like baby carrier and putting her in the car and then realizing that I had to take the cart over to the cart return that was like right over there. But it was like, it felt like this miles long distance to leave my child all alone. <laughs> Nothing's going on in the parking lot, but I was like, threat, 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 threat. <laughs> couldn't get there quick enough and get back. There's just is something hardwired into us to have this like fierceness. And yeah. so, you know, it's just kind of our instinct to protect those that might be in danger. So take a look at this mom. So yeah, mama bear, right? That's a term that's used for a reason. Every woman has a ferocious bravery in her. And we just rise to the occasion. A threat that's bigger than us comes and we just, we rise up. It's like beyond our normal capacity, but it's like this superhuman, I can turn a car over in this situation kind of ferocious strength. <laughs> There's not a second thought about self. It's just about neutralize the threat. <laughs> So moms and, and women who have that DNA of a mom in them, that's all women, I am here to remind you that you are brave. Even if you might not feel brave, it's in your DNA. By faith, you can activate that. Amen. You are empowered to have the victory in every battle. Amen. You're destined to partnerships, I feel like these are, these are declarations over us, and I feel this huge amen from heaven on this yeah, stuff. On. We're destined to partnerships with other powerful women, not for hiding, not for being in isolation. You are a warrior with weapons to bring down strongholds and release the kingdom. That's you. Get that picture in your mind. That's you in the spirit. That's you with God with you. You were created to crush the head of the enemy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all of heaven, I think, echoing. Yeah, That's who you really are. 
Yeah. That's who you're wired to be. Amen. So all of us are rising up into that, that recognition and that truth. Amen. So, so bravery, what are we talking about when we talk about bravery? I think really about David and his mighty men, the mighty men of valor. So what does valor mean? Valor is great courage in the face of danger, especially in battle. So bravery doesn't come or valor doesn't come from self. And it actually has no regard for self. That bear is not regarding herself. She's like, I got these, I got a mission. (laughs) Not even thinking about, ooh, what happened? No, it's like, we're all in. (laughs) We're all in. Bravery is not arrogance or pride. It's not a false faith in oneself. That's what pride is. It's just falsely having faith in oneself. And that's what the Bible calls a scoffer. Proverbs 21, 24 says, A scoffer is the name of an arrogant, haughty man or woman who acts with arrogant pride. That's kind of the opposite of bravery. Pride and and arrogance, like puffing oneself up, that's not it. That's not the bravery we're wanting to talk about. The bravery we want to talk about today comes from the Lord. And it's actually in the context of relationships. Valor doesn't come from the belief in self. It comes from that like unyielding faith in the Lord, who he is, what he's set in us, and what he's doing behind us, beside us, in front of us. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that we want to discuss today is this concept of bravery within the context of relationships. And, and I think it's really important for us to grab onto this because God gives us relational assignments. He gives us relational assignments. You know, we being built for bravery, I think all of us can take courage. All of us are built for bravery. And in that, um, we see this amazing story in 2 Samuel chapter 10. What we see happen is the king of Ammon right? His, he dies and his son takes the throne. David and the king of Ammon were not really that angry at each other. They were, they were okay with each other. So David sends some servants. You guys have no idea how hard it is to sit here and preach. Uh, we can stand. Do you want to stand? Um, we're good. I don't know what I'm doing. Want to stand? Right. So, so we go. He's, he's got to move. He's got to move. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Release him from the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my love. We try. We try. Um, so Ammon, Ammon um, uh, dies. The king of Ammon dies. His son takes the place. David, in his effort to be kind, sends a group of servants to the new king. And in sending the servants to the new king, um, they show up, they walk in, and they're there. But some of the other princes of the kingdom say, hey, I don't think they're here on good intent. I think they're here to spy out the land. And we need to teach them a lesson. Now, David, in his heart, was just like he understood grieving. He was like, hey, I'm going to send some people to come serve you in your mourning. And what they did is they cut their beards in half, which was a huge sign of disrespect slid open their clothes, actually, actually ripped, their, ripped their, their garments in the back and made them walk home in shame. David comes out, hears about this, and he comes out and meets them halfway, these servants. The king himself, he comes out and he meets them. He says, listen, I understand that you've been shamed. You've been disrespected. What I want you to do is just take some time and let your beard grow out. Once your beard is at full length, we'll go take care of this problem. So they go and, and they come back and they, it, I don't know how long it takes for a beard to get to that length, but it was a while. They let their beards grow out fully and then he gathers up his armies. And in gathering up his armies, he assigns Joab, who's the general to start creating a battle plan to come after 
Ammon. Ammon sees the, the, the armies of Israel starting to gather up and they're like, uh-oh, we done did it. We have a problem. So they go out and they start hiring different armies to come and fight for them. Different kingdoms like, it will take 10,000 from you. We'll take 30,000 people from you. And then they partner with another country named Syria. So Ammon and Syria are the two big players. And they're going to come at Israel from two different sides. Because this makes sense. So the army of Israel is gathering up. So then we catch up to the story in verse 9. And it says that when Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best and put them in battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai, his brother, that he might set them in battle array against the people of Ammon. Then he said, if the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the people of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what is right in his sight. Yeah, yeah. I, I just love this piece of scripture. I love that these two men who were generals, were brothers, they they weren't like, okay, I'm just going to gear up and I'm just going to battle on my own. I'm going to have my own resources. They were like, no, I'll help you if you're overcome. You'll help me if I'm overcome. Yep. We're stronger together. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Why don't we all say that? We're stronger together. We're stronger together. Some of yes. you don't believe it, but let's try it one more time. <laughs> We're stronger, We're stronger together. together. Okay, I'm going to say it and then you repeat it. We'll try it that way. We're stronger together. We're stronger together. Come on, amen. Yes, amen. It's amen. So true. Yeah. Yeah. So bravery actually really requires partnerships. We we do we do have more bravery. We are better equipped when we're partnered up. Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. We're made for these strong partnerships. Yeah. We're actually made for it. You know, there's a recognition that we have to have concerning specific people in our lives that we are called to partner with. Yeah. And I think it's important to look at, look at where, who are we called to partner with? And when we look at the contexts, not only are we made for strong partnerships, but as we recognize that there might be something on a relationship, I think it's good. One of our core values of relationship is to declare your commitment, right? That's one of the reasons we do membership. That's one of the reasons why we do a lot of things we do around here is because we just say it out loud, right? We, I think it's so helpful to know the context of your partnership and to tell somebody about it. Okay, so when we look at the different contexts, one of the contexts we could look at is covenant. Your covenants matter. Your marriage is important. The covenants that we have are partnerships that we must support each other and be brave yeah. together in. This includes parenting children. You have to be brave in that. There's a, there's a covenant partnership as a parent to a child. Then we also have family. Our families matter. Maybe your extended family but also our spiritual family matters, right? We have to be willing to be brave on behalf of each other in the context of a spiritual family. Then we also can look at, at, at the context that we do life in, your workplace. There are partnerships in your workplace. There are partnerships in your ministry. There are specific partnerships that God has set aside for you that we have to actually come closer to, declare our commitment to, and be brave. So partnerships provide a lot for us. I, the Lord's been speaking to me about nourishment lately. And, you know, there's so many ways that we're nourished by the Lord. We're also nourished by partnerships. I think about the like the oak trees, the the grove of oak trees that are the largest living organization. I'm sorry, Aspen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. Um, uh, Aspen trees that are largest living organization on the planet. 
the, the trees that are on this side of that grove are pulling certain nutrients from the soil, and the trees that are on this side of the grove are pulling certain nutrients from the soil, but they're all interconnected. It's like all those nutrients that, that maybe this side has that this side doesn't. It, it, we, we feed each other. I'm going to get something from the Lord that you might not get something, get that same thing. And so I'm going to feed you and nourish you with that. It's like we have all these requirements for actually thriving and growing, and, and we provide that for one another in relationship. You know, one of the things that we also get as we partner well is encouragement, right? We get encouragement yeah. from one another. There's a great passage of scripture. that says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yeah. So encouragement really requires that I keep my faith strong for somebody else. Come on. If I can't believe God, when I'm not actually the one in the so fierce good. battle, if I can't believe God for, for that victory, that person's victory, I have to stir up my own faith so that I can be that nourishment, I can be that encouragement and, and bring that person... Um, an elevation in their hope, an elevation, I'm going to release hope, I'm going to release faith, I'm going to release belief into that situation so that they can be victorious. The things that come out of my mouth then, if I've stirred myself up in my faith for them in their battle, then the things coming out of my mouth are, are actually truth and, and are strengthening come them. On. That's yep. calling that bravery up in them where they might just be totally weak, that faith, that, that encouragement. It's like, oh, it bolsters us up. We need that from one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when why don't you share what happened in the leader step last week? This yeah part here. So we just were talking about kind of like who who am I becoming? Who are we becoming? And and my thought was it's actually not about who I am becoming. It's about who I'm becoming in relationship to who you're becoming. It's, it's, we are in relationship. That's yeah. how God works. It's not about just me. It's about you and me and you and me and you and me and you and me. We're, we're this, this network. That's, we all are going glory to glory together. So we have to get our focus off of just ourselves and who we're becoming. That's so easy to get so self-focused. Totally. Yeah. Who am I becoming? What am I doing? What's God calling me to? No, who are they becoming? And, and how can I partner in that? Yeah. You know, often we need a partner in our life who is going to help us heal. Oftentimes we are lost or we, we don't know what's wrong with us. Anybody else been there? I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, and, and it's really nice to have partners in your life who can help you heal. There's um, um, a reality of healing that, that Jesus, though God could heal anyone by himself at any time, he chooses to use people to release healing. He chooses to use people to release that in people's lives. I can't count how many times I've been hurting and I call my friend, one of my best friends that just gives me the right word at the right time is Peter DeWitt. And when I talk to him and I'm struggling, he just has the word of the Lord for me. And it helps me not only understand and get encouragement and nourishment, but often it helps me heal. You know, in James 5.16, it says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The context of healing there is, in the, is within the relationship. I'm telling you my dirt. I'm not making myself look all bright and shiny all the time. I'm just, everything's great. I'm all good. Everything's good. No, I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. When that person said that, it sent me sideways. 
Right? And it's good to confess your trespasses to one another. Of course, it does need to have some trust there. But I will tell you, you can't have trust until you risk trust. You actually have to take the risk and do that. That verse ends with the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Some of the healing just comes because they're praying for you. Yep. Right? Amen. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to look at some things that are bravery busters. What gets in the way of us having bravery, experiencing bravery? So the first is isolation. It really sabotages bravery. Yep. I think we've all experienced that where we're under something and we're, we're finding ourselves alone and we're just in our own experience, in our own head. And boy, that is a tough scenario to, yeah. to rise up in bravery. And, and oftentimes that isolation is just that result of really self-focus, right? And, and self-protection a lot of times. Yeah. Sometimes that not knowing what to do. That's when we have to, to recognize, oh, I'm isolating. Step back into relationships, step back into community. We all have those relational wounds, you know, that would cause us to maybe view ourselves incorrectly or others incorrectly and want to just kind of stay, stay a little further away because it's risky and scary. And um, we really have to take the risk to partner with the people around us. Yeah, come on. And the other piece of it is take time to seek healing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're wounded and you're finding yourself isolating and alone, seek healing. There's so much opportunity for the Lord to heal those things that would cause us to want to self-protect and isolate. And, and, you know, the enemy just loves it when we're isolated, right? That's like, yeah, perfect scenario for the enemy. So we just want to take the time to take those steps to get the healing that we need to come back into relationship, to correct our beliefs, to take those brave steps, yeah, come on. to trust the Lord, yeah. not necessarily always the people. Right. People yeah. mess up. They're going to break trust sometimes, right? And of course, you know, there's really, you're going to choose, right? You're going to be led by the Lord. Hey, what do I on. need to be doing in this relationship? Yeah. Do I need distance? Is that, you know, there's times, of course, we're not talking about that. We're talking about when I'm just, I've become an island and I'm just doing it by myself. That's, that's such a bravery buster. <laughs> yeah. Proverbs 18.1 says, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. What? Dang. <laughs> Proverbs Thanks, breaks it down. <laughs> no, no holds barred. So yeah, that's, that's busting the bravery up pretty good there. Yeah, you know, and I think um, we mentioned isolation in the context of self-protection. And one of the reasons why we do that is because we've had people who have broken our confidence in the past. Yeah. We've had people, so a bravery buster is breaking confidence with somebody's yeah. trust that they've given to you. When we uh, speak loosely about what someone else is experiencing, that, that is a huge, huge trust breaker. Yeah. And, and, and we need to have partnerships that are healthy if we're going to be brave. Um, when it comes to breaking confidence, it breaks trust and it sabotages partnerships that would allow us to be brave and to take territory from the enemy. It's a sabotage um, action. Yeah. I, I think um, sometimes you'll hear it in context of, oh, you need to pray for this person. They're experiencing X, Y, and Z. How about you just, can you pray for this person and stop? Yeah. Just cut that off. We don't need the detail. God knows. God knows. And if somebody says, can you pray for this person? Don't start wondering. And then start Ew. seeking and asking. Ew, and like, the, don't seek and ask for what's going on. Seek and ask. <laughs> what yeah. is the Lord saying? Yeah. What is the Lord saying? Because we pray according to the will of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Proverbs sixteen twenty eight says, "A whisperer separates the best of friends." If Joab and Abishai didn't have trust, they wouldn't have gone to war together. But Joab knew that Abishai would come when he called. 
And Abishai knew that Joab would come when he called. There was a trust there. But the things that break trust would have prevented them from actually winning that battle together. The next bravery busters are offense and competition. Those are like cancers mm. that eat away at bravery. So. It's like a, like a nasty infection. <laughs> <laughs> Prevents partnership. So those we have to be really aware of when we're feeling competition, when we're feeling offense, ooh, where I'm in the wrong space. Lord, yeah. help me, right? Seek, seek the other way. <laughs> seek the other way. We really, when we're offended with one another, we miss assignments. The Lord has assignments for us, and, and it's in partnership. And, and we just miss those completely because we're seeing red about somebody. We just are like, you know. Um, create, you know, comp competition creates separation. Yeah. It's not like, hey, brother, Let's fight this Let's battle run together. together. It's like, oh, look at his I'm gonna armor. I'm going to run faster than you. Oh, look at his army. Oh, look at his chariot. Oh, I don't, you know, then we're either feeling mine's better or we're feeling, oh no, mine's smaller. You know, it's, yeah. that is not competition. That creates separation. We need actually to be championing one another. Come on. Yeah. Lifting the other up. Going, oh, look at that armor. Oh, look at that chariot. Oh boy. Hey. Enemy doesn't stand a chance, right? Yeah. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so those, those bravery busters, isolation, breaking confidence, and offense and competition. So we want to remain in community, right? Yeah. And partnerships. Yeah. Keep confidence. <laughs> Forgive. Yeah. Yeah. Champion one another. I think she kind of noted it, but I'll just say that... Um, Usually when we're offended with somebody, there might, it might be a sign that there's destiny on the relationship. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes our offense is a seed from the enemy to prevent us from running together, yeah. to prevent the partnership. So when I'm offended with somebody, often God actually has a greater destiny on it. And what does he require of us to be able to lay it down, to be able to forgive, to be able to let go? And I'm not saying that you should be partnering with people who are always abusive and people who are, are doing horrible things. But there are a lot of relationships where we misread the situation. We totally misunderstood what was going on. The enemy has twisted some things around and you're bent out of shape in the corner. And God's like, actually, that's, there's destiny on that. You need to let it go because they're my kid. They've got destiny. They have purpose just like you. And I want you to run together. Yeah. I want you to run together. So, yeah. 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 Or they just missed it. Yep. You know, they, they've made a mistake. Sometimes the people yeah. right near us miss it because they're human and can we have grace and let the Lord walk us through offense to come out of it so we can stay in partnership. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So the brave go to war. The brave go to war. And first it's through prayer and intercession, right? Colossians 1.9 says, For this reason we also... Since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And that just goes on to be one of the most beautiful prayers. Yeah. First through prayer and intercession. That's how we go to war first. Yeah. You know, and you see this played out in Acts. Right Over and over, there would be some type of calamity that would come. They'd get arrested. They're having to face a trial, and the people would pray. And when the people prayed, things changed. Yep. They changed. We cannot undervalue prayer. And we do. We do. We're like, oh, I'll pray for you, but we never actually pray. Right? So we have to be willing to spend time in prayer and intercession. In Acts 12, we see this picture of Peter is in jail. He's kept in prison. I'm going to read verses 5 through 7 of Acts 12. So Peter was 
kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. I love that they were earnestly praying. They didn't say they were half-heartedly praying. They were earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Boy is locked up. It says that suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up, says, quick, get up. And the chains fell off of Peter's wrists. And he walked out. There's a lot of battles, a lot of situations that we may be facing. A lot of, a lot of things going on in our world. And if the church begins to pray, yeah. it'll move. Yeah. It'll move. But we have to call on the God of heaven to do something supernatural. We have to pray and ask God to move. There's a weightiness on prayer in this season. We cannot neglect it. We can't just limit our prayer for people to my, to my 10 minute devotional in the morning. We have to be giving ourselves to prayer. And, and Paul says, pray without ceasing. There is something powerful when we choose to intercede and pray for each other where things move. And we yes. don't have to have all the answers. We go to the one who has all the answers. Yes. We don't need the solutions. God has all the solutions. We don't need to have a Messiah complex and come in and fix it for them. We pray and God moves. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so when God puts somebody on your heart because he's going to give you prayer assignments and, and you just thinking about that person and going, huh, I wonder how they are. That's God putting them on your heart. Come on. So take the next step and, okay, Lord, what are you saying? What, what, how do you want me to pray? And if you have no idea, you have no idea what's going on with this person, but you're just thinking about them, you can't stop getting this person out of your Oh, that's your assignment. So pray in the spirit. Amen. That, that's Amen. a great way to pray. If you have your spiritual language, just let the Lord intercede for that person. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So when you don't know what to pray, pray in the Spirit. But, but take the leap. Let, let the Lord lead you into prayer assignments. Yeah. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is prophecy. If we're going to go to war, we need to prophesy. Mm -hmm. um, this is a gift of the Spirit, but it's simple. It is simple. Prophecy is that God, give me your heart and give me what you want to say to them. Give me your heart and then tell me what you want to say to them. It is that simple. I'm serious. It is that simple. But I will tell you how powerful it is when you get God's heart for somebody and you begin to say, this is God's plan for you. This is what God wants to do in this situation. This is what God is saying. Man, I will tell you, it just breathes life into people. It brings hope to people. It opens people up to be able to do things they could not do on their own. And we are a church that embraces prophecy. There is no problem with saying, I feel like God is saying this for you. See, when somebody prophesies, guess what? Some, the person receiving it gets to choose what to do with it. You get to choose what you're going to do with that word. If you feel like God is all over it, then you should receive that and go, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Or, wow, I'm not sure. Maybe you need to have a conversation, seek some counsel, or if it's very confusing, or if it seems weird, you can just set it on the shelf. You don't have to do anything with it, okay? But the reality is, is that God is ready to speak to you through each other as we exercise the gift of prophecy, right? And, and how do I know the context for this? It's 1 Corinthians 14.3, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, another, the NIV translates that to encouragement, and comfort to men. 
So when we prophesy, we are, are edifying one another, we are encouraging each other, and we are comforting each other. I just taught this class, right? I'm teaching this class, the Supernatural Gifts class, and we just dealt with this this last week. And I will tell you, God's not interested today in the prophets revealing your dirt. No. No. Not interested. Not interested. He already knows. What he is wanting to do is have the prophets reveal his will and his heart for people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think about the prophetic too. You know, if I'm looking at Chris and he's getting ready to go into battle... And he's like, oh, man, I wonder if, it can, if I can do it. I don't think I can do this. And I say, you're a mighty man, and the Lord has called you into this battle. And, and I believe you're going to be victorious. I believe God's saying you're going to be, you know, I hear what God is actually saying. God's, like, going to empower him to do this. Really helpful if he hears that. Through, you know, then he's yep. like, oh, yeah, I'm, this is who, you know, it's like, oh, then we can stand up and really believe Come who on. we are and what God has said. Amen. Really helps to hear it sometimes. Sometimes we didn't, we just needed to hear it. Oh, yeah. And be reminded. Yeah, that's who I am. When you prophesy, you open up hope, you open up destiny, and you release empowerment for people. Okay. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is communication. This is, this is one of the great ways to go to war, is by communicating what's happening. What is going on? Tell the truth in love. If you want to go to war, tell the truth. You don't, you don't want to be blindsided because you were dishonest. Tell the truth in love. Tell the truth. One of the things that I think is really important, like we have a culture of communication here where we are going to share our thoughts, our ideas. We'll share our feelings with honor, with love and honor and a spirit of prophecy, right? Revelation says that Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. When we begin to communicate the heart of God, we tell the truth and, and express the love of God and we begin to break off division by communicating the truth. Deception will always breed division. But the more truth you can tell, the more open you are to tell the truth, the more unity there is. And I am telling you, you have to be unified if you're going to go to war. Many of you are in battles and you're by yourself and, and, and it's always hard because some of us are okay telling the truth in love. We don't mind telling the hard things. We don't mind saying, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This might be the thing to look at. Maybe there's something down beneath the surface. Let's help heal that. There are people in your lives that are going to communicate with love and honor for you, but hopefully to release you of anything that is holding you back. When we go to war, we have to be able to heal hear the hard things, not just tell the hard things, right? This is communication. It is like I can express it, but I can also hear it. So in communication, we need to be able to communicate well. Most of the battle will be won when we tell the truth in love and we communicate with honor. It brings healing. I am telling you, it sets you up for success. So when we go to war, we have to communicate well. We are not against each other. We are for each other. Amen? Amen? Yeah. yeah. So the enemy really flees when we partner. In that scripture in Solomon, the, the two generals partnering with one another, the enemy, the, the, the two that were against them, we're like, ooh, I better not. Syria was like, oh, I better not do side with them anymore because I see they're getting whooped. So the enemy's like, ooh, let me step back. When, when we strengthen ourselves and we partner, the enemy actually flees. You Come know, on. he's roaring around trying to find who he may destroy. And when we're partnering, it's like, oop, can't destroy them. Better than them. <laughs> so yep. the enemy flees yep. when we partner. God tells the serpent that when the seed of the woman with the seed of the woman, he would be defeated. Genesis 3.15, 
says, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So yeah, the enemy might strike your heel, but you're going to crush his head. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So be courageous. Step into battle shoulder to shoulder with one another. They were able to take, Joab and Abishai were able to take down the enemy because they were partnering. If they would have tried to done it on their own, who knows how that would have worked out. Probably not great. So be available, be selfless when the Lord leads, and be willing to risk jumping in the battle with and f- on behalf of somebody else. Yeah, when on. they're getting pummeled by the enemy, Whoops. we got to be willing to get in the fight. Yep, yep. Amen. Yep. Amen. So again and again, the Bible, I'm just reminded, says, you know, after these big battles, and then there was peace in the city for 40 years. And then there was peace in the city for this amount of time. These long amounts of time. They, you know, we win these battles in partnership and it impacts the city. The city is impacted with peace because the enemy, the bringer of chaos and destruction, has been eradicated. And so peace can rest. That's, that's shalom. The authority that's connected with destruction gets the boot. (laughs) What I'd like for us to do as we kind of close our time together is consider a few things. Okay, I want us to consider a couple of things. The first thing is, where in your world do you need bravery right now? Where is it that you need courage Where in your life are you feeling overwhelmed? Where do you see the enemy starting to stack up against you in your life? We need to know where our fight is. Where do we need bravery? And some of us would look around and go, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But God actually wants to highlight something to you because he has set aside a partner for you to go to war with you on your behalf. He has set aside people that are in this room and people who aren't even in this room to go to war on your behalf, to war with you to win the battle. To win the battle. So what is that area? That's the first question. Where do you need bravery? One of the things that becomes crystal clear when we look at that is we recognize I need bravery to take territory from the enemy. The enemy has had territory. I need to take it back. Maybe maybe it's an area of your life where the, the, the Lord has never had that territory. But God is saying, hey, this is where I want you to go. This is the place I want you to be. So understand that as we step into partnerships for bravery, it is for the sake of taking territory away from the enemy. So where, what area do you need bravery? And understand that area is an area that God wants you to take territory in. He wants you to advance the kingdom in that area. Okay. Yeah, I, I just want to keep that, have you keep that, that area where you need bravery. Invite the Lord in and allow, allow that picture of that mama bear with those three cubs and the, the enemy coming in to try and harm. I, I just want you to picture that, that bravery mm. that that mama bear has and, and those three cubs might be some arena in your life where the enemy has, has tried to destroy, has tried to kill, has tried to take what's yours. And, and I just would impart to you the ability to rise up in that ferocious bravery that's way beyond yourself. It's way beyond your, yourself, but you're wired for it. So we just release that bravery to you now. And God, I, I pray that if you have a partner for this person in this fight right now, God, will you just um, alert each one yeah. to the partners that you're leading them to? God, we're, we're 
You made us for partnership. You made us that way. So I, I pray for those partner, those strong partnerships that, that really release bravery. And who am I to be brave for right now? Yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.